First of all, I would like to thank actors and makeup for being here and helping us with our film. We've been working this like four months <laughs> and uh, we are very thankful that you are here helping us to get this film done. Et siis luutnantti heimosta. Tässä ole. Mitä viestiä toimita? En toimita mitään viestiä, herra luutnantti. Tarina on vain palvelustani. I propose to do a, a war film first. And the idea was quite nice and opinion of a big part of the crew. When David, the director of Sankari, told me that he wanted to do a film about World War II, I was thinking that's actually something I've wanted to do for a long time. Like the one who makes that, that his child. Oh, that's your name. Okay. Just the behind the scenes. Yeah. Sophie in the house. Hello. Fuck yeah. Antu. Antu. <laughs> and <laughs> Shibek. Yeah. Working yeah. on a computer. And, and then we got the man. <laughs> hey, how are you? And now? Also you, of course. Hello, hello, welcome to our... MTV Cribs. <laughs> yeah. What's oh, and there's the sound guy. Sound guy. <laughs> <laughs> the sound uh, guy. What is your role in this production? I am actually the writer. So I write down things, getting this whole story to give it a, give it a kick. Let's put it that way. Okay. And what's with you? My role is kind of producer. <laughs> In this project, it's like a line producer. And doing all this uh, stuff, paperwork, yeah. paperwork, yeah. yeah. Let's have a look on David. Hey, how are you? I'm fine, and you? Yeah, fine. I'm okay. trying to remember everything we had to do before uh, starting to write the script and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay. We, we should meet for the references as soon as possible. Yeah. Like this weekend. Right now. I wanted to tell a story about not necessarily the war, but how are people like feeling in the war. So the story is about a young soldier who wants to be um, a hero. So he joins the, um, the military and then he faces the reality uh, of war. How would a person like him see the war, how would he feel at the trench? Herra Lutnantti, meidänhän pitää puolustaa maatamme paholaiselta. Tietysti. He thinks about the battlefield as a glorious place, but in reality it's not, because um, war is facing death and it's really devastating. The writing process wasn't hard, it was more that um, I'm getting it right. So I have a story which can fit into a 15-minute short film. Liian moni tieten tahtoo luopua elämästään. Entä hän? Hän halusi elää. We spent a month on the on the script, but I actually spent two weeks with him just doing corrections and trying to find the best way for the story. For a lot of th things that we saw before uh, we see later in the film. But as this is present, his uh, change uh, psychologically and maybe physically somehow. The thing is he must... During the pre-production, I had a lot of meetings with a lot of members of the crew to uh, everybody to have the same idea about how the short film should feel. So we're going to use them as publicity, but not the official one. Oh, yeah. uh, that's official for the moment. And then I had very interesting meetings with Eddie, with Adelbeck. We were uh, discussing with director and screenwriter about how we deliver sound. We had a lot of discussions about um, the tension during the short film. We had these drawings that I, I have them, 
Uh, I will put it on my wall because it's very beautiful to see how a scene evolves in tension. It's like a so we had these uh, like graphics and, then, where and then below the explanation on what happens every moment that the, that the tension is growing. And most of the time the tension is growing because of the sound. The story, as you have seen, it's about war, but uh, it has one... Uh... It was shocking to do the casting in Finnish because even though I already knew that the film was going to be in Finnish, when I arrived to the casting, I was in the mindset of um, my last casting that was in Spanish. So I had all my ideas very clear, but in Spanish. So when they start to act in Finnish, I was like, what is happening? I don't understand anything. I don't know what they are saying. So I had a lot of papers in my desk uh, with the um, English uh, script and the Finnish script. Um, and I was changing between them all the time to un actually understand what was happening. But it was really hard, the first uh, casting we had because of this shock that I had in the beginning. We did casting in Finnish mostly because the movie is in Finnish and uh, the, the actors are Finnish so they would, even though I think everybody in the crew knows English pretty well, uh, if you had to act in English just suddenly then uh, it, it's gonna be hard. So we did everything in Finnish. Actually, I had uh, Simon for translating from Spanish to English and then Antu from English to Finnish. So it was quite um, a good workflow. I translated uh, most of the stuff to David and to the actors. And I was their uh, co-actor in the scenes and I, I helped them improvise. Don't you want so, Antu, don't you want to act? Oh, you know? yeah. Antu is the most handsome man in the fucking world. Yeah. And he's so positive vibes all the time. Yeah. I'm in love with him. Yeah. Sorry to admit. David and the others thought that I did such a good job as Erna maybe I should play him and th thank God that didn't happen uh, because I really wanted to be in the crew this time because I've done my acting back in the day <laughs> and I am so happy with the Erna that we got and I would I would have never been so great in that role Let me hear you say it. Perkele. Perkele. <laughs> no, no, I'm we're... confident. The production is going, I mean... Yes. It's a typical, typical film production. In the beginning, nothing is like it should be. But it most of the time turns out pretty well. Mm -hmm. So... We were already thinking of the problems we could have on the production or the challenges actually. And we thought that the costumes would be a challenge, the weapons, and also to have the trench. Yeah. Do you want one? Yeah. Oh, there's a bigger one. Look at this. Oh. Look at this. Come there. <laughs> Around. I think it's in the other side. We are lost in a military zone, so it's not a good place to be lost at all. Yeah, we're gonna die. Yes, yeah. we can die here, but it's good. When we got to our location, I realized that we had a hole in the ground. So I thought, okay, we should build something at least to uh, give the audience more this imagination of, of a trench. So I went on and I looked for a little, little woods and I uh, started to build a test trench. And I showed it to David, our director, and he says, can you do it like three meters? So we built a trench together. What a beautiful trench you are building. Ha! Got it. <laughs> Wait. 
No, you're you're getting me in a bad moment of my existence. Oh oh oh! Put it away from there. No, don't worry. Oh my gosh. Are you ready for this speech? Yes. Do I throw you there? No, no, no. In the middle here. But it's a screen. Same. Yeah, put it upside down. Okay. Yeah. Roll. Okay, Rolling. Rolling. Okay. 378, 26, take two. <coughs> Sound is okay? Yeah. Action. I didn't know what, what type of costumes and guns they were. So I had to do a lot of research and I finally I found out what kind of costumes they used, what kind of guns they used, uh, what kind of like plates did they have on their colors, all kind of props and extra stuff that they might have had with them. I've been looking up that. Uh, another thing for the uniforms at the, at the trench, do they have some kind of um, handshoe? Gloves. Gloves or something? Gloves. I, yeah, I think they have to some gloves. We managed to um, do everything, to have everything on the, on the film, uh, but um, that was because of the great uh, art director we have, Antu, who managed to, um, to find this military store and we bought all the costumes there. We went there a lot. Uh, I think at the end of the pre-production they already knew who we were and every time we went to the store they were like hey it's you again I'm trying to look for details for the first um, shots we have on the trench and also I'm looking for something for me there's a huge amount of uh, old suits which are from the year, I think, 1962. And those are the suits that we used. They are really similar to the ones they had in the 40s. They just miss one pocket. Because the, the older suits had four pockets and these new suits, suits only have two. Scene 377, 26, take one. Come on, The guns that they used in the continuation war are rare and expensive, even if they are like uh, deactivated or props. Uh, but finally we got airsoft guns that are so similar to the actual guns that we could work with them. Nimittänyt sotamies Erno Jäppisen vapauden ristin toisen luokan Mannerheim ristin ritariksi. He looks on the ground. Slowly, his hand embraces the metal. For a moment, he just holds it. Then, he rips it off his chest and deposits it on the podium. The metal that we have in the film was also a bit difficult. Um, there's a bit over 100 soldiers who got the medal back in the continuation war. And there weren't so many, like even fake medals around. But we finally found one medal uh, from the internet auction market, which is this Finnish Hutonet. The other uh, difficult thing was a Soviet uniform uh, for our Soviet soldier. And the, those are hard to find. It was uh, really a miracle to have the, the Soviet costumes before the shooting. There was this man who made a war film few years ago, like 50 kilometers from here, and he had like Soviet suits in his storage. So we con contacted him and we got to borrow his Soviet suits. Also some other stuff, but we had to do a road trip uh, to get the costumes. We took our screenwriter and director and graphic uh, designer and... Yeah, 
and a car. You, you see this beautiful landscape and then you hear Jen cursing. It smells like shit. We went three hours to a three hours road trip to the south, I think, to the south of Finland to have the costumes and met the guy and he had all this, well, he had like, I don't know, maybe almost 20 costumes and and belts and props and all kind of little things that, that really made the cuts here. That's the one. We worked, every uh, crew member, member worked like really hard and there was so much to do, so much prepare and it was kind of on a rush but, but, but we managed it and I'm really proud of it, yeah, proud of everyone. What do you think? Very nice. Are you happy with your makeup? Yeah, there's uh, still more coming up and mm. we'll make it work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's just a making. <laughs> Hi, Eddie. Hi. Explain us everything you have. Uh, we have, yeah, all this, all the equipment, pretty much, all of it here. I'm preparing it and the, yeah, gathering all around here. Whose jacket is this? Okay, this jacket is of our main character, Evel. Yeah, and right now I'm to attach uh, this transmitters, lavalier mics. And I'm gonna put it here like that mm -hmm. and it's well hidden and it won't uh, disturb actors from like free movements so and I'm gonna put the lavalier mic all the way through yeah we got we're lucky that we got uh, if you look closely we're lucky that we got this holes on the jacket like initially and we can put it through this all the way here it's a perfect spot to put a lavalier microphone to, to get a better sound of dialogues and we can tape it right here and it won't be noisy we won't get any noises from fabric yeah and it's well hidden <laughs> this jacket is not comfortable at all it is. It's not. You picked it. He forced for me yourself. to do it. Because he didn't want it to be alone with his thing. Surgeon thing. Wait. I wanted to buy a, a long jacket. Now he's going to. First of all, I would like to thank actors and makeup for being here and helping us with our film. I would like to uh, let's say, mm, emphasize that this is our work. But I do know that all of you love cinema as much as I do, as you in the rest. So we're going to have a great time doing this. And remember, the shooting days are passing. So if there's something that it's if shooting is hell, you remember it's going to pass. And if shooting is heaven, also remember it's going to pass. So, enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. For our movie, we had four shooting days. 
And the first shooting day was in school, which was a better environment than the other shooting days, because the other shooting days were in a really cold forest, like, I think it was one to two degrees. It was so cold and we were driving there, there early in the morning. It was completely dark. We were in the forest with our lights, setting all the stuff up, coming home late. When I came home, I just went to bed and, on, and the next morning woke up, drove to the forest again. I hated that I had to wake up before six, but that's what you gotta do. Welcome on the sanctuary in the Finnish forest. It's cold. Everyone was cold, everyone was frustrated because all of it, it took so long. I want to die. 13. <laughs> Please, I want to continue. I'm like a knight in shining armor. Now he has to do it again. <laughs> Love this angle. <laughs> what? Ah, Look, he has dirt. He has, I'm eating my own hair. He, had, he has dirt on his teeth like a real dead soldier. <laughs> you girls having fun? Birmigin Kazavan Mokhtahoy Meaning Yelem Meaning Yelem when we came to our location that we eventually uh, uh, chose for our film, it seemed that this location is quite nice in terms of sound. But um, on, a, on a production itself, we had to always check if there, if there is a car approaching. It might sound like not that much of a problem but but it was a forest and it it was like not like a car passing by but more like a plane and it was it was so loud so i will try the actions with all of you so see well actually with both of you so let's see if what action can be done by who most of the actors have experience in theater which is really different from movie and film. So we had to work around that a little bit because theater is very like big and dramatic and film is really small and uh, minimalistic in terms of acting. I am actually very happy with the background actors because they, uh, they didn't broke the role in all of the production. They could switch easily from uh, scene to scene because sometimes we shot a scene where one of them was already dead and then again he was alive. So it was sometimes really, yeah, like uh, not clear for them, but they did a really great job. They had this experience in military school, most of them, so they really knew how to act in those situations. And that was, it really made a difference on the shooting days to have a, a really good background actors. They really worked together with us and it was not that we were just directing them or like David was directing them, but they were communicating with us. I did get to play a part in the film as a wounded soldier with a um, burnt face and bandages around his head and, and bandage, around, uh, bandage around his hand. I was only like, I had one finger and he usually did my makeup uh, among the first people who got their makeup uh, because I would have to be in lights all the time uh, so then it would be just over with pretty fast and I would get to focus on the lights. The bad thing though is that my other hand was completely wrapped. I had like two fingers <laughs> that I could use and also had this bandage all over my head I couldn't hear probably all the time. Latex that I had on my face was really itchy and, and difficult. And I had to be in the uh, makeup for three days, for half an hour of shooting time. 
in the third day. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah, because we fucked up the schedule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They were so enthusiastic about shooting and acting, so we had just a really great time. Okay, after the clap, can I start drinking this and then you say action and I go? Yeah. yeah. Scene 3, oh 64, 14, take 4. Silence! And... Action! <laughs> Uh, we had this challenging shot on the script, this challenging moment of the main character vomiting. So we were thinking a lot of ways to shoot it without asking the actor to actually vomit, and that it's very hard. So we made this vomit by our own with pea soup, coffee, uh, water, and some other ingredients that made it very disgusting. So we had this uh, little uh, cup of vomit, and then we did some shots with it, um, trying different, actually we, we tried two different angles uh, and then I decided one of them and then we did the shots first without the, the vomiting, just to practice and then with the vomit and we did it three times and the second time, <laughs> even before I said action, the, the main character was already throwing up and I thought, oh, this is, this is very nice, this is a very good shot. And then they told me that okay. he was actually throwing up. <laughs> there was not the, the liquid we, we made, he was really throwing up. And the smell was a little bit disgusting. Scene 355, uh, 6, take 3. Action! <laughs> This is funny because we were talking about that with Simon the other day, about our favorite uh, scenes. And we had some uh, deep uh, thoughts about it. But the conclusion is that my favorite scene is scene three. That it's when the, when the, the wounded soldier comes to the trench. Because it's, it has the, um, the most, for me, the most fun directing and the most fun um, shot list of the whole film. And I also enjoy to watch it because I, I see a lot of mistakes, but I also like them. Like in the way that, the way we define creative solutions to solve some big mistakes. So it's the scene that has no, the most see. of the mistakes of the short film, <laughs> but I like them anyway. <laughs> it was a really hard shot to film, but uh, because we had to uh, switch the camera between me and Sophie, and I had kind of to run and give it to Sophie in a good way that it was like, like one shot and we didn't have to cut. And uh, yeah, because I was running and I think Jen was holding me, I had to run and give the camera and I almost fell. In the pre-production I realized with uh, some of the crew members that we had this crane on the university. So I really wanted to use it. With the crane we could make a, a, a shot from like high to a low. You can go with the camera like this and with the slider from left to right. So we made up a shot for it in the um, shot list that was making a lot of sense in the, the way the story was being told on the storyboard. Then when we were in the set already, in the shooting days, we realized maybe it was not such a good idea. But we had it already, so we did the crane shot. And after in the first edit, with we edited it as the way it was in the shot list, then we realized it was not necessary to have that shot. But then Simon came with this new idea when he had um, in his house and then he came here to the editing room and he just did it without my permission actually. And then he showed me how it was working in the other way around. He took the same shot and he inverted it. 
So now it was working much better to uh, have an introduction. Most people probably won't recognize that it's a visual effects um, scene. Like we filmed this trench and I realized the trench is like very empty. And I thought, we can't show it, it's too empty. So I got some soldiers from other shots and um, put them into the trench to fill it up even more. It looks so normal, but it's visual effects. <laughs> then there were a lot of shots, very cool shots with slider. That was also a thing I, I wanted to have from the beginning. But then in the first edit, again, we decided to leave it out. But when I saw the, the crane and the, the new short film with a new beginning, a lot of things made more sense. Nope. And after some days of trying things, Simon again came with this idea to have the slider as the beginning with some explanation, little explanation of the context. So it was uh, actually the shots, the special shots we had, and it was uh, very challenging shots from the beginning. We managed to get them on the film at the end, even though in the middle we had some discussions about it. Are you even serious? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Look at that way. That way. Why can't can I be just, I don't know, just no, like this? No, or? Simon. Oh, no. I have to, all yes. oh, right, all oh, right. Yes, but oh, look right. to the other side. <laughs> like that? Can you go more? Can you go down? I can't go down no more, no. See, okay, wait. wait. When I was writing the script, I was writing scenes which not ended up in the film. For example, we had the scene with a detached finger and our team, we had an amazing team. Everyone was working so hard and they did this uh, reconstruction of a finger very good and then we didn't use it. We also shot a scene completely which not made it into the film, which is was, was actually the first scene where we see Erno preparing himself for getting the medal and it sh should have been a teaser for what's to come. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Do, do you also think it's still a bit too dark? I mean, I, I, now I have this cross in the middle of the screen. Do you also think it's too dark? Can you go a little bit like this so I can see? So we realized when we watched the whole thing that the first scene was not making any sense. So we just tried to move it to the end of the short film, uh, just before the last scene. And then we had this chronological order of the short film. But when we watched it, it was not interesting. We, we jumped from a very interesting uh, ending from the battlefield to a very boring uh, waiting room. So then we just decided to take it away and it worked. All right, let's, um, let's do it one more time. So we had three shooting days on the forest and the first one was quite good on time. And the second one, we had a lot of difficulties to finish all the shot lists on time. So the last day I had to do the things that were planned for the last day and the things that were left from the day before. So we had to reschedule everything. In the end, we just skipped a lot of scenes. David was standing in the middle of the battlefield, our set, with his shot list, which Marit and me prepared for him, and he was just with his pencil and cancelled page per page per page because we had no time to film it anymore. So I decided to split the team and have a second unit that we're going to um, uh, shot all the feeling, the field shots, the ones that are not actually uh, saying something, like for example a close-up of a cigarette, a close-up of feet, these type of shots that are important for the edit but not actually for the um, acting. So I had this second unit doing the, um, these feeling shots on the trench and the first unit were uh, in the battlefield for the last um, scene on the, on the forest. So that was a very good idea because then we had time for do everything and, and also we had this uh, other point of view from the second unit that it was also very refreshing for the edit to have these uh, different style shots that we could use um, and to keep the um, attention of the audience during the whole short film. <laughs> Should I kill someone? Kill someone?
I bought a computer game in the end. Really? Yeah. Now? Yeah. No. In the worst moment uh, possible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which game? Rise of the Tomb Raider. Rise of the Tomb Raider. You know Lara Croft? Mm -hmm. Ah. Yes. What are you doing, Sophie? Oh, uh, I don't know. Arrest me. Hey! <laughs> He's bullying me. She's not working. Oh, that's not true. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm putting her back to work. Simon! That's my name. Stop it! Stand up! Um, how I am... What is abkratzen in English? <laughs> okay, quick tutorial. Our lovely director wants the last scene in black and white, except the golden medal. So what I have to do is to mask out the medal in every single frame. And that's what I'm doing now. Sorry, that's by the way my fault. Because I told him that we can't have it in the whole thing in black and white. Simon! Sneaky Simon. Yeah, but it has a reason though. Look, wait, how can the viewer see what I'm doing? In Probably by showing the picture. So, for example, here I'm adjusting the mask then. And first I have a Another look. very uh. challenging part for the post production was the color grade. Because we had uh, these different days of shooting that, as I said, we were changing from the beginning to the end of the, of the short film. So we had very different lights. But again, I also knew that that was possible because we had Sophie. And Sophie is great, so she can, I know she can do this um, matching of the, between the shots. Then we had these two options that were very difficult to choose in the beginning. There was color or black and white. The black and white was the easy choose because there it's easier for her to match everything. But the color was also very important for the storytelling of the story. This one matches perfectly with Ernos. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the, the, the general that. Uh, so then she came up with different uh, options and, and then we choose the amount of color we wanted for the for the color grade. To create this specific look for Sankari, I lowered the saturation for every single picture, just to create this feeling of hopelessness. And otherwise, I also changed a bit the uh, colors into a bluish, greenish direction. I think it's very unique, and we just found it perfectly. We match it perfectly with the story. Kujala, mitä sä teit? Missä ne lisäjoukot ovat? Kujala, mitä sä teit? Missä ne lisäjoukot ovat? Okay. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. Post-production stage. It uh, turned out that we need more um, dialogue lines, and we set up our uh, ADR session. So yeah, let's do just some tests. Yes. Okay. Anna ne olla, kun hän pitää huolta lisäjoukoista. Next is to finish the battle. Let's say the the, the battle is finished. Um, which which command <laughs> which command is the command where they are going over the trench? Because you see this this, this is all the tra the the translation. So you don't need to talk. You just take the fucking paper. Oh no, okay. So let's do it this way. I'm telling you, the command where he's going over the trench comes before the black. With the command, we're cutting to the black because then it's when we stop and we see and we hear like blah blah blah, blah stuff. You know what I mean? The I know what you mean, but I don't agree. No, because the, yes, you will agree because the command of going over the trench will be the introduction to the your black. Opinion. <laughs> <laughs> will be the, it will be the introduction in the black into the black. Ah, oh, okay. So in the black, it's visual storytelling. Then, then in the black, we should hear them uh, going ah. out from trench. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. and that's and that's where the big stuff happens. The boom, boom, and then mm -hmm. you hear, and then boom. 
Okay. Ooh. And then we can hear in the uh, bar baro almost at the car. This one. We <laughs> suddenly decided to record Battle Cries. And I just um um invited all the all the guys um I could found in uh, places nearby and I invited Simon and David and we just uh, stood uh, in front of the microphone and just shouted uh, like out loud <laughs> to create this crazy like um, in some way really um, scaring sound of battle cries of soldiers um, before battle begins. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> oh, that, was, that was actually for. Uh, ah, no. I what? was explaining. Ah, okay. That was like 40 <laughs> seconds, but yeah. Good. 40 seconds? Oh, shit. I have a headache now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you, when you, you keep on so screaming in this room. Ah! <laughs> oh, shit. I really enjoyed the whole process of this production and every stage of it and uh, i'm really i'm really thankful and for everyone who was involved in it and i should say that i'm pretty satisfied and that was that was a lot of fun not only but mostly fun <laughs> we had 4 days of shooting and in the first day everything was more or less fine, at least in the time. No, okay, it was not true. In the, we had four days and the first one was horrible. Yeah, it was so cold and we were driving there, there early in the morning, like it was completely dark. I, I hated that I had to wake up before six, but that's what you gotta do. This production was uh, quite extreme. It was really cold, it was in the Finnish woods, it was muddy, rainy, foggy, but all in all, it, the experience and working with so lovely people together was just great. Even though I had to put my alarm at 5 in the morning, it was all worth it. Working with really talented people, really passionate people, you can learn a lot much than you already know at the moment. And I really appreciate everyone's um, influence. Yeah. I just, I just loved every minute. It was so fun. We made a film, and the best thing and the greatest thing I can hear from the audience is that they could feel with our character Erno, and that's the main goal I think in filmmaking, to touch the viewers' hearts. We take a look. Um, so, before that, do you prefer to have? 